Hey guys, it's been a while since I've covered a data pack video, so today we're going to showcase some data packs released over the past two to three months that are currently available for Minecraft 1.19. There's a lot more I'm waiting to cover, but Optifine still isn't available when I'm putting this video together, so I've recorded this on Minecraft 1.18. The next few data packs are all from the same developer and will overhaul individual structures. This first one will change the pillager outpost, and as you can see, it's much larger with it looking like a huge tower, although the interior of an outpost isn't changed much at all, as it mostly consists of empty floors until you reach the very top. You can find a few chests spawning inside as well as on the top floor with plenty of pillagers to kill. This next pack changes shipwrecks instead. They should now have a more interesting design, with them being a lot larger too. They still function the exact same, so expect to come across them often, with them containing chests. Shipwrecks are able to spawn as a few different designs too, and they look a lot more majestic overall. Interiors are also slightly changed, but you don't have to worry about the mod being overpowered in any way, as the amount of loot you'll come across is basically the same. There's also the option to change ocean ruins. In general, the designs are changed slightly so that they look more sophisticated and old. A lot of them look like they've come from ancient Greece, and they make good use of Prismarine too. Install better villages to find these fantasy-looking towns. They won't replace vanilla villages. They're just a new structure that you'll find in locations like the Plains Biome. The buildings are a lot bigger than those in regular villages, and you'll still find villagers spawning throughout. A lot of the buildings are decorated, allowing villagers to have professions. With them being so big, there's also multiple floors, and you'll often come across chests you can search. Instead of overhauling the existing desert pyramid, this pack adds a new pyramid instead. You could occasionally find these spawning in deserts, and they shouldn't be too hard to spot due to their size. There's entrances on each side of the structure, and inside you'll find a huge room made up of pillars. Around the edges of the pyramid are different tombs, which contain spawners and chests. There's a few gold blocks which can be collected here too. Most of the loot can be found at the top of the pyramid, which you can scale from the outside or build your way up to. There's even more spawners up here, as well as lots of chests, iron blocks, and gold blocks. Finally, there's this pack, which can change ruined portals instead. They'll have a bit more foliage and nether-related blocks around them. The portals themselves can also spawn as different sizes, with some of them being much taller. If you like the look of these packs, it's worth keeping an eye on the developer's page, as they might overhaul more structures soon. You can install this data pack to add five different butterflies into Minecraft you're able to kill them to have a chance of collecting their body for display. Or you can craft a bug net from two sticks, one cobweb, and one string. When catching a butterfly in a bug net, you can release it in a location of your choice. There's also a menu allowing you to summon the butterflies whenever you'd like. You'll now be able to display your banners like a flag so that they'll sit horizontally. With this data pack installed, just sneak and right-click while holding a banner to attach it to a compatible block. Some items you can attach them to are fences, walls, and iron bars. Waystones can be crafted from three polished andesite, two amethyst shards, one lodestone, and one eye of ender. You'll then need to take it into an anvil and rename it, like village. Place the waystone down in a location where you want to teleport to. It's three blocks high. When you interact with a waystone, you can see a list of all other activated waystones and then teleport between them. You're able to break waystones and move them around or rename them, and you can have 28 activated waystones at once. With three sticks and a torch, you can craft a throwable torch. When you right click while holding this item, you can throw a torch which will stick to the first block it hits. The item is only able to fire four torches before being consumed, so it's best to craft a few of these. They're able to stack too, so that you can carry 16 per slot. Death Point will cause a barrel to spawn when you die, which contains all your items and experience. After dying, the coordinates will also be visible in the chat, 
and you can point towards the barrel and see how many items are inside, so you don't have to worry about items despawning with this data pack installed. Awesome Dungeon, which I've mentioned a few times on my channel, is now available as a data pack. With it installed, you can come across places like the Giant Jungle Tree, the Witch Castle, the Abandoned Oak Palace, and the Desert Temple Husk. When clearing out these locations, you'll come across vanilla mobs and also receive loot from the vanilla tables. You can expand on this data pack further, as releases are also made available which add dungeons to the Nether and N2, which you can find on the developer's profile. The ones that I'm showcasing here all exist in just the overworld. This pack is very cute. During the night, lots of Minecraft's creatures will fall asleep, taking up some different positions. Some will even sleep standing up, like sheep, whereas wolves will lay down and curl up. It's really impressive, and I think it would be cool to have a feature like this implemented into the vanilla game. Although sometimes the creatures look dead, and I'm sure some slight breathing animations would help with that. Even pillagers need to take a rest from all their raiding. Apollo's additional structures currently adds three structures into Minecraft. These are the campsite, small ruins, and mangrove swamp hut. These have some different variations, so they're at least a little unique. And in the future, the developer plans to add more structures to this data pack. To obtain a storage plus barrel, place down five blocks of redstone, add water to the middle, and then throw in a barrel. This barrel will be able to hold 24 items, and you can repeatedly upgrade it using different materials, which unlocks more pages. It acts a lot like a shulker box, so you can break it, place it down again, and all your items will remain inside, so it's pretty useful overall. You can add fireflies into Minecraft with this data pack. It spawns in particles and has them move around and fade out in an attempt to make them look like fireflies. It definitely helps with the ambiance, and maybe you'll want to add it to your world. This data pack will allow you to hire a wandering trader. First, you need to interact with them while holding a golden axe, and they need to accept your offer, which they won't always do. You'll be given a trade stand axe in return. When you hold this axe and press F, it will summon a trading stand. When you interact with the wandering trader, you can choose items you want to sell and what you want to sell it for. Other players can then come and interact with your wandering trader and buy your items, even if you're offline. That's the end of this list. I'll do another one soon, as this video was more about data packs that are compatible on both Minecraft 1.18 and 1.19, instead of solely on the latest version. Make sure to check out my channel too, as I've been covering lots of mods and resource packs.